So Anna, I met her at the zoo in uh, the Maryland Zoo in Baltimore. And I needed to find an African elephant for a reference thing so I could do a portrait, a commissioned portrait for an African elephant. And I Googled, and there really weren't any in New England, which is actually good news. Um, this is not a great climate for elephants. Uh, but there was one at the zoo in Maryland. They actually had four. There were um, two that were tuskless of their four. One was a little baby who was com or quite a young elephant who was not with her mother because they said it made the mother too excited. So something's wrong with that picture. Um, one was naturally tuskless and another one had had their, her tusks removed when she was, before she came to the zoo for reasons that they're not sure, but actually she healed really well, which is unusual. And uh, so she was okay. But Anna was the only one who had tusks. And since my client wanted a tusked elephant, uh, Anna it was. I. The Maryland Zoo is not terrible, but it's not great for elephants. The, the keeper was literally walking right by Anna's side, like right here at all times. And the other keeper was with the other female elephant who was the one who was tuskless. And uh, they had a, you know, I don't know, a half acre enclosure. I wish I knew how to approximate size. But they had, you know, a, a, a half acre enclosure all packed dirt, not a blade of grass in it. Uh, I mean, for elephants, it's all about family. And so though these elephants were well care for, cared for and undoubtedly well loved. They did not have any kind of family structure there, really. And they did not have any kind of natural habitat. And it's the only place where I have seen the keepers on the same side of the uh, enclosure as the elephants uh, because in the other zoos that I have gone to which are really good zoos um, they are trying to replicate the natural habitat as much as they can for the elephants so anyway Anna I went down several years ago to meet her I took a lot of photos she was 45 years old when I met her I believe she had spent the last 30 plus years at this one zoo uh, so it really was the life that she knew. She could easily live to be another 20, 25 years old. Uh, I stood within six feet of her on opposite sides of, of her enclosure, but it was as close as I had ever stood to an elephant. Um, and I could see her eyelashes. Her eyelashes were four inches long. I'm like, oh my gosh. And I could see how hairy she was all over. And that hairiness is something that is largely invisible because the hairs are so fine. But when I was really, uh, when I was that close to her and then where she was backlit, I could see how hairy she was. And I actually asked her keeper about how hairy she was. But she is a very handsome elephant. Now, I am self-taught as a painter, and my own history had me start as a, uh, as a dyer. I did, uh, I worked with, uh, I began with batik, which is a wax-resist dye process, and then I started thickening my dye, and I started painting with it, and I started creating all these different ways to move the liquid through the fabric and create all these interesting fabrics and things. Uh, and then I, you know, after doing that for almost 15 years, then I took a long trip around the world and I took watercolors with me to have something to do while I was traveling. And the, uh, the watercolors were perfect to continuation from the dye. Dye is a translucent medium, as is watercolor. In, with dyeing, there is no white except as a negative space. So it's a, it's a space you preserve white, assuming you're starting with a white cloth or a white paper uh, and uh, and there is no opacity for for dyeing or for watercolor watercolor I did when I went took my trip around the world and I fell in love with watercolor and I came back and I said well let me do um, let me illustrate children's books because I always love children's books and so I worked at that for a while and then it was years later before I started, before I was finally able to make the switch to oil paint, which I had looked forward to forever. And oil 
does give you opacity and does give you white and is also a very liquid medium as is dyeing in watercolor because it stays, it doesn't dry right away. It stays open and you can work it and, and, uh, and so I loved that. But then I also concurrent with when I switched to oil paint, I spent um, 10 or 12 years uh, doing faux finishes in Boulder, Colorado. I did not just murals, but I did all sorts of elaborate uh, finishes on walls. I'd actually started this on my own home back in New York City before uh, Benjamin Moore even made any kind of glaze to, to do with those kind of paints. Uh, and so what I learned when I was doing that faux finishing in my very, my complex colored walls is I would lay down all of these different artifacts, colors, so that they might pop out later. There might be little bits of them later. So when I'm watching this video that you are watching and I'm like confusing myself going, oh my god, I'm going over that same area again. Oh my god, I'm going over that same area again. I am. But each time I'm going, going over it, each layer I'm doing is an imperfect layer. Or almost, I mean, every once in a while that won't be true because I want to erase what I did before. But usually I don't want to erase what I did before. I want parts of it to be able to peek through. Mother Nature does not make a solid color, period. It doesn't exist. And all the colors that we see are always affected by the light in which we see them and by the things around them and the reflected light from that. So, and elephants additionally have all this complex texture. And this particular painting, one of the reasons I was doing this one about Anna, is that she is all covered with this yellow ochre dust that is caked on her and uh, is adding so much color to the, to the underlying color of her skin. And so each layer I am putting on, especially with elephants, also true for rhinos, uh, is actually adding another little bit of texture to the surface. And all that texture, which is on the elephant too, is collecting light and reflecting light and grabbing future colors into its crevices. And it's just, it's laying the foundation, but it's also doing more than just the foundational work.